Hello, kids. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through different activities, Bible stories, and songs every Sabbath. If you this is your first time, we want to welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program where we have fun together. And if you are a regular, welcome back, kids. Always good to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. As a hot week that this has been in smog and smoke outside from all the fires that are going on, I am happy that we are here worshiping inside. We're safe. I hope that everyone is safe. Mom and dad are safe. And I've been praying for you guys and I've been praying for your safety and for everyone's safety, especially of our firefighters. They're out in the mountains fighting those fires. Camp Cedar Falls, where we went camping last year, is, is the fire got really, really close to Camp Cedar Falls. And we almost, almost had, um, I mean, everyone evacuated, but they almost, Camp Cedar Falls almost caught on fire. Uh, we were praying all week for Camp Cedar Falls, and I'm glad and I'm happy that God helped uh, keep the fires away from Camp Cedar Falls. As a matter of fact, Camp Cedar Falls is is being lodged. It's been a lodge for um, for all the firefighters that are fighting the fire out there. They're taking a rest. They're coming to rest, to sleep, to eat at Camp Cedar Falls, and that's also uh, one of the great things that our camp is doing during the season of fire. So let's remember to pray for our firefighters as they continue to fight the fires out there. It's temperatures are, are extremely hot. All the smog, all the smoke. Let's pray for the animals, for the safety of people, uh, for the people that lost their homes. So let's remember them in our prayers. But I want to thank everyone for being a faithful Kids Connection part of a Kids Connection program. If it wasn't for you guys watching our program every week, we wouldn't be doing this. So I'm happy that you are enjoying this. Tell your friends about it. Go to graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. Let them know about this program and what, how much fun we have together. And hopefully more kids get to participate and to watch this program too. Now, I'm going to invite you guys to sing our song of the day together, which is a whole lot of change. Because just like now, there's a whole lot of change. Everything is different. And we're going to be singing this song together. And I'll explain why we're singing the song later. So call mom and dad, your siblings, or by yourself, whoever's watching with you. Let's sing this song together. A whole lot of change.
That was a fun song. I loved it. And I hope that you guys enjoy it too. Always come back to sing our song of the day during the week where you get to have some fun singing the song again and listening to the program one more time. Just don't forget to check our website down below where we have the song of the week, the song of the day. We have some activities, pages for you guys to bring up to participate. Now I'm going to invite you guys to bow your heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for all the blessings that you've given us each and every day. I want to thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program at home. Be with them now as we worship and help us to get connected with you and learn about your love and what happened in the story in the Bibles, in the Bible. So be with us as we worship your name today in Kids Connection. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, this is going to be, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to learn some different things throughout our program today. So stick around, don't go anywhere. But before, before we get to that, we're going to go into our mission story now. And our mission story is talking about this man who is not a pastor, but he does a lot of work that the pastors are doing. He is an administrative assistant. Let's see how God is using him to reach others. Watch our mission story for today. The West Central Africa Division sends missionaries to the front lines of mission in both the cities and remote, hard to reach areas. But mission also happens in Pierre's office at the division headquarters. Pierre is the administrative assistant to the president of the West Central Africa Division. Part of his job is to work behind the scenes, making sure missionaries are placed where they are needed most. And while his efforts usually go unnoticed, Pierre doesn't mind and finds joy in being part of God's work. To me, I think uh, all those who work in uh, the vineyard of the Lord work in various capacities. Some do some work that uh, people can see, but others also work behind uh, the curtains. Even if you're not on the front line for people to see, I think that is not the most important, but even in your very small corner, you can contribute to the progress of the Lord. Pierre wakes up early at 4.30 so he can beat the morning rush and get to his office. He answers emails, sorts out itineraries, and applies for visas for missionaries, among other things. I don't see it as uh, an ordinary office work. I work in the church of the Lord. Working in the church is a blessing because we are called to work, to be co-workers with the Lord in the salvation of people. And as Pierre goes about his work, he comes in contact with people who need counsel. As a church elder, Pierre prays for the different people who come to his office. Sometimes he gives a word of encouragement to the missionaries who come before they head out to the mission field. Nothing could have been really possible without the people who are working behind the scene. And some of us as leaders, we are just here to represent them. And we are the public person, but those who are working behind the scene in our division are serious workers for the cause of the Lord in our territory. So we are grateful for their life. We are grateful for their talent. We are also grateful for whatever they are doing. And we work as a team. Please pray for Pierre and the team in the West Central Africa Division. Pray that the Adventist Church continues to grow there and that many are reached for the kingdom. Thank you for supporting Mission. That is so cool how God is using him to preach the gospel and to tell others about Jesus and his work. Now, let me share something with you guys. 
In addition to being a part of Kids Connection and participate here with you guys, with you kids every week. And when we were here at church, we were participating and having fun together inside the Kids Connection zone. I also have a job here at church, which is administrative assistant. I do the same thing that he is doing in addition to all the office work. So I know exactly what he's talking about and what they're talking about because I too reach out to people, people reach out to me when they need help, and this is what I do here at Vallejo Drive Church during the week. This is my job, and I also have fun coming here to Kids Connection and being a part of the program with you guys. So let's remember all the missionaries out there who are administrative assistant, and may God continue to bless them in the work they do, and I know all the work they do, so they can continue to share the love of God with other people. Thank you so much for your offerings and for your prayers. Now, we're going to go into our program for today. Today's program, we're going to be talking about changes. Changes? What about changes? Well, we sang our song of the day, right? There's a whole lot of change coming your way. That was the song of the day. And this is why we're, we sang that song. And it's because our theme of today. In our story today, we're going to be learning something about changes. But before we get to that, and I explain what that's going to be, let me ask you guys something. Do you know what a custom is? A custom is when you are used to do something. For example, a tradition, right? Tradition is when you have, when you are used to do something on a certain way. Let's use some uh, examples. What is your Christmas tradition? Do you open presents? Do you open presents the night before Christmas or do you want the open presents on Christmas Day? What is your tradition? What are you accustomed to? Another tradition or another custom is how about birthdays? What do you do for your birthday parties? Do you guys eat together? Do you go out to a restaurant or do you have a party? Do you have balloons? Those are things that you are accustomed to. How about New Year? Do you guys go traveling on New Year's? How about summer vacation? Do you have a place that you go on your summer vacation with your family? Those are things that you are accustomed to. They are tradition, right? Let me share some of the things that I find interesting. Did you guys know that here in the United States, we have several different ways that people say hello? They say hello by shaking hands. They say hello by hugging people. They say hello by waving. And they say hello by fist bump, right? Those are different ways and it depends on who you are saying hello to is how you, which one you're going to use. If it's someone you know, you say hello by giving them a hug. If it's someone that you're not too sure, you give them fist bump. Nowadays, you're just saying hello, waving hello from a distance because we're all protecting ourselves. But there are different ways that people are saying hello. This is what we are accustomed to. Did you guys know that in some places, in other countries, when people greet each other, they kiss each other on the cheek. Not only one kiss, but they give two kisses and sometimes even three kisses. Like in Europe, in France, in Brazil, people kiss each other when they say hello. Oh, this is my friend. Oh, hello. You just approach and you touch your cheek and you kiss one, two, and three depending on who that person is. That is how they are accustomed to in that country. Did you also know that, let me see if you guessed this one. Which country do you think that people don't use forks to eat? They eat with chopsticks. Which one? Some Asian countries, right? Um, we have Japan, we have China. There are other Asian countries that people use chopsticks to eat. They don't use fork. They don't use fork. And did you know that if you use the chopstick to stab the food and to rip the food apart using the chopstick, it is disrespectful in Japan? 
In other countries, for example, people eat with their hands. Like in India. In India, people, they all sit. They don't sit on the table. Well, some places, they don't sit on the table. They sit around on the floor and they have a big bowl of rice. And people just grab rice with their hand from all from the same plate. And they eat all together with, with uh, bread. And they're eating all that together. That's how they're accustomed to. Pizza. We eat pizza with our hands, right? We go to the pizza place or we order pizza from home. Did you guys know that in Brazil, you don't eat pizza with your hands? You eat it with a plate, knife, fork, napkins on your lap, and you cut the pieces of pizza and you eat it with your fork. Try going to a Brazilian pizzeria one day and they're going to actually give you a plate with a knife and forks for you to eat with knife and forks. That's funny. If you need to know, I know a Brazilian pizzeria, so I can tell you that. How about other places where you don't shake hands, where you don't wave, where you don't hug, where you don't, where you don't kiss? What do you do in uh, some countries? Let me see if you know. You get in front of the person and you go. You bow. You don't bow with your head. It's not like this. No. You bow with the whole, your body. You put your hands, you put your hands on your, on your, on your legs and, and you bow the, the entire body from your waist up and you bow everything showing respect to the other person. That's how you say hello in countries like, like Japan, for example. Now, who uses piñata for birthdays? Yes, it's a Mexican tradition. They are accustomed to that. So when they have a birthday party, they fill the piñata with candies and they have a stick and they hit the piñata until they break the piñata and all the kids run and get all the candies. That is a tradition for Mexicans. And we use it here too because some of those traditions are fun and we hear, we do it together here, right? Um, other countries, when you walk in someone's house, you take your shoes off. You take your shoes, you don't walk in someone's house with your shoes. As a matter of fact, you don't walk inside of any house with your shoes on. And when you go to church, everyone leave their, their shoes outside and they all walk in the church barefoot. Imagine a church our size where we have about five and six hundred people in church walking out of the end of the service in their 600 shoe pair of shoes which one is mine what if they're two pair of shoes that are look they look alike and which one is mine uh, do i take the new one do i take the old one what if you take the wrong size imagine that but that's their that's their tradition that's what they used to do in other countries when you walk in the church the men sit in one side of the church and women sit on the other side. The Muslims, for example, that's a religion. They are accustomed to do that. Uh, something very interesting, and I'm going to close with this. As I was learning some things from different countries and what people do, I learned that in Qatar, okay, there, there is a country named Qatar. Guess what they do? The men, when they come to greet each other, they kiss each other on the cheek. Now, there's one kiss, two kisses, or three kisses. And this all depends if you know the person. If you know them, you touch your cheek. Uh, if you don't know them, you touch your cheek once. Like, hello, nice to meet you, and you touch the cheek. If you know them somewhat, and you know them from before, then you touch them twice. You go and you touch once, twice. They hold each other on, on their shoulders and they touch their cheek once and twice. Now, if you really know that person and they're your friend, you come and you touch their cheek once, twice, three times, and sometimes even more than three times they touch that. Now, and if they're very close friends, sometimes they don't touch cheeks. They grab each other on their shoulders and the men come and they touch their noses. They rub their noses one on the other. Imagine how funny would that be? 
what we think is funny, but for them, they are they are accustomed to that. They are used to that. It is tradition for them to do that. Now, if they um, if they come to an elderly person, they kiss that elderly person on the forehead because that is showing respect for the elderly. How about you? What are the things that you are accustomed to? Do you wake up in the morning and you go straight and have breakfast? Are you accustomed to that? Or do you wake up and you pray? Do you pray before your meal? Do you pray three times a day? Do you take off your shoes before you walk in the house? What are some of the things that you guys have as tradition do you know you're not sure you don't remember how about if you ask mom and dad ask them what are some of the traditions some of the things that you are your family is accustomed to and start start thinking about those things because that is what identifies who you are because when I tell you when I told you all these different things that are happening in different parts of the world that is what identify those people so when you see someone when you see two men touching their noses one two three times you know that they're from Qatar there are other countries that do that too they, they also do it but right now I'm just sharing the Qatar country because that's what I learned today what are the things that you do that identify you and your family what are you accustomed to today in our story we're going to learn about someone who went somewhere and she met a different family and that family had different traditions had different things that they did and she had to learn those things and I'm talking about Ruth Ruth went and had a new family and what are the things that she needed to learn and when I talk about removing your shoes and your sandals before you walk in the house you will hear in your story today an explanation about shoes and sandals right in the memory verse that your teacher is going to talk about so let's pay attention to our story that will talk about how Ruth went to a new family and had to learn and she experienced some changes in her life with the new family but before we get to that let's go ahead and sing our song of the day together one more time there's a whole lot of change coming your way
does like it or not, nothing stays the same. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because even though we are experiencing a lot of changes, you are with us. You are protecting us and you promise that you'll be with us until you come again. Help us to always remember that and always trust that you will be with us despite everything that is happening. Be with all the boys and girls as we learn the story about Ruth today and her new family. Be with all the firefighters, all the first responders, the doctors, the nurses. Protect them, keep them safe. And Jesus, thank you because you love us and you are in heaven preparing a place for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. I love having you guys here. Don't forget, and this is something that it's new, or not new, but I want to introduce you guys to this. Today, do you guys remember last month we had Johnny came out to the Zoom meeting? Remember? Okay, well, Johnny is not coming to the Zoom meeting, but today we are having a live worship service. The pastors are going to be on the worship service and their Pastor James has prepared a special message for us today. And here's something fun that you're going to see. It's been a while since we don't see that because we don't get to go to church. But today in the Zoom, we are going to witness a baptism. Yes, someone is getting baptized here at Vallejo Drive Church. And you guys will get to see that. Ask mom and dad to go to graceunconditional.com at 11 o'clock today. Maybe they can join in a little earlier and go to our live Zoom worship today. We're going to get a chance to see each other on Zoom and hear a live message from Pastor James and watch a live baptism happening here at the Leho Drive Church. Now, um, Sundays we have the Kid to Kid uh, where we all the kids join the Zoom meeting and we play some games. Well, we're going to be stopping the kid to kid zoom on sundays for now so we're not going to have kid to kid on sundays until we announce that again so sundays spend time with your family have fun with mom and dad do a different activity maybe something that you can do this week is learn different traditions from other countries and see what traditions you have as a family that's something fun that you can do now uh, we also have a couple of teachers that are joining us. And the teachers are going to be for juniors classroom and for the early teens classroom. Just a heads up, we're going to have the juniors and the early teens classroom coming up very, very soon. So be on the lookout for that. I'll let you guys know when those lessons and those teachers are available to do their lesson here at Kids Connection. I want to finalize with a special thing. I want to wish Vashti and Ariane a happy birthday. It was their birthday last week, and Dad contacted me and told me that they had a birthday. So I want to wish Vashti and Ariane a very, very happy birthday. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. And uh, uh, Vashti turned seven, and Ariane turned five. Happy birthday to the two of you. And if you have a birthday coming up or you just had a birthday, send me a note. Ask mom or dad to let me know so we too can wish you a happy birthday right here in Kids Connection. Kids, it was good having you here. Thank you so much for being a part, for participating. Come back next week for another Kids Connection program. Until then, may God keep you safe and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, kids. I love you. Bye-bye. Good morning, children. Happy Sabbath. It's Sabbath where I come from too. It's nice to see you all this morning. I'm Ruth. And I know you all have been hearing a lot about my story, but there were still some questions that some kids had. So today I'm gonna to answer some of those questions. So one of the most common questions I get is, how did Boaz become my husband and redeemer? Well, I suppose it may sound like a love story, but it was all part of God's story. 
As you've already learned, I met Boaz when I was gathering grain in his field. It was the only way Naomi and I could eat because all the men in our family had died. So we lost our land and we had no way of providing for ourselves. Boaz was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech, which means he could become the man in our family if he wanted to. This may seem odd to you children, but this is the way it was. By marrying me, Boaz saved Naomi and me. He was able to do what we could not, buy back the land Elimelech had owned, so we could have a home and feed ourselves with a farm full of animals and crops. Our family had been dead before Boaz saved us, but when we had children, it was alive again. But it was not easy for Boaz to become our redeemer. There was another man who was more closely related to Elimelech than Boaz, and the law said that he had the first right to become our family redeemer. So you might be wondering, did they fight over me? <laughs> no. Boaz went early to the city gates to talk to him. As they met in the gates of the city, which is kind of like your courthouse, Boaz asked him if he was willing to buy the family land and become the family redeemer. Of course, that included marrying me. The man said no. So Boaz was free to marry me and redeem our family to show that he agreed with the deal. The relative handed Boaz his sandal. Isn't that weird? It would be similar to the way that you would shake hands today. I was so happy that Boaz was to be my family redeemer. Boaz was a great godly man and I was blessed to have him as a husband. So, our family went from almost gone to very important. And here's how. Boaz and I had a son, and we named him Obed. When Obed grew up and married, he had a son, my grandson, Jesse. And when Jesse grew up and married, he had many sons, my great-grandsons. The youngest of all these boys was named David. When David grew up, he became the king over all of Israel, the greatest king the nation of Israel has ever known. Our family has been blessed beyond measure. So one of the last questions that we get is what would have happened to us had Boaz not redeemed us? Well, Naomi and I were completely helpless. We had no way of taking care of ourselves. We would have been homeless beggars if it had not been for Boaz. Even though I didn't know what was going to happen to us when we went back to Judah, God did. He had a plan for us, even though we did not understand it. I did not know God's plan, but I loved God and I trusted him completely. So in life or in death, I trusted him. This helped me not to be afraid when I didn't know what would happen to us. I'm so grateful God chose to honor Naomi and I with such a great family. But I knew he loved me no matter what happened. It was nice to visit with you children. Enjoy the rest of the lesson. Wow, thank you Ruth for joining us today. That was fun. Have you ever wondered why God included this love story in his great story? Well, Ruth told us that her great grandson was King David, Israel's greatest ruler of all time. What she didn't tell us though is even more incredible. Let's turn in the New Testament to the part of the Bible that tells Jesus' story. Turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter one. The very first chapter in Matthew tells us all about Jesus' ancestors. Right here in the middle, there are some familiar names. So uh, we're going to read verses 5 and 6. So get your Bibles and read with me. Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. 
Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. Whoa, that's so exciting. So not only was Ruth the great grandmother of King David, she was also related to Jesus Christ himself. Isn't that amazing? Just think, Ruth and Naomi's family was almost completely wiped out. But because Ruth stayed with Naomi and reached out to Boaz, Jesus, the great redeemer of the world, was born from Ruth's family. Isn't that something? All right, it's time to read our application verse together. So we find it in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. Say it with me this time. Without faith, no one can please God. He rewards those who truly want to find him. All right, now we're gonna do our craft. So you need a few things for this craft. You're gonna need some cardboard. So we just are using this Amazon box. You need two pipe cleaners. You need a pencil, a hole punch, some scissors, and some beads. So we used pony beads, but you can use uh, pretty much any kind of bead um, that's, that's nice and big in diameter. So, and what we're gonna do is we're going to make a sandal just like this. All right, so our first step is we're going to trace our foot onto a piece of cardboard. Try not to be too near to your foot because That's right. you need your sandal to fit. Yep, you don't want it to be too small, so make a, a line on the outside of your foot, not too close to the foot. And also so you don't tickle your feet. <laughs> That's funny, Mama. Next, you're gonna cut out your outline of your foot. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark a spot in between, put your foot there, Sammy, in between the big toe and the second toe. And then right where you want your sandal to connect, right at the arch of your foot on both sides. Okay. Then, <clears throat> once you have those dots, then you can take your hole punch and you can punch the holes in those spots. Do you want to try it, Sammy? No, you okay. do it. All right, I'll do it. <clears throat> okay, so Carlina, show us how you're going to uh, punch the holes in your, in your dots. Great. Make sure your dots are far enough from the edge that your cardboard won't rip right away when you put your uh, pipe cleaners through it. Good job. Okay, and then the one between your toes. All right. You got it. <clears throat> okay, now you have your sandal and it's ready to put the pipe cleaners through. Okay, next, you're going to take your two pipe cleaners and you're gonna twist them together at the top. First, you might wanna poke that into the hole. Okay, you can poke it into the hole first. And poke then, both of them into the same hole at the top. And then you can twist them. And then you can twist them. And you can stabilize them at whatever type of thing you like. Yeah, so a good way to do it is to fold the ends down so they make a, um, a straight line across so that they don't pull out when you pull them on the other side. Okay, now, now you're gonna take your beads. Mom, I wanna do a YouTube video take me yep. So scooch over there, Sammy, and you can both do it at the same time. Scooch over there. Mom, tell, you, tell us where it's enough. 
Okay, now you're just gonna start putting beads on both of those pipe cleaners. All right, so when you're, uh, when you're getting close to where you wanna be with your beads, and you wanna make sure that it's enough, uh, you can try your sandal on. So put those little things between your toes. And then you can measure to see if you've got enough beads to, to go to your hole. So you can see on this side, we've got almost enough beads on that side or just enough beads on that side. And on this side, we're getting very close. Yep, we have enough beads on this side too. So you can measure it to the hole. And you can see, you can't really see the hole because Sammy's foot is in the way, but you can see where the hole is right there. So if you measure to there and you see that you don't have enough beads, then you can put more beads on. And if it's too long, then you can take more beads off. Okay, so once you have enough beads, you can put the pipe cleaners through the holes and pull it all the way to where the beads end. Good job. And do the same on the other side. I it looks like it's twisted. That's okay. All right, now you can turn it around. And you can take the pipe cleaners at the back and you can twist the long ends of those together. And twist them together lots and lots of times, maybe 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Once it's, once it's twisted nice and tight, then you can flatten it down to your shoe and you can either cut the ends off or you can tape them down. I'm it's up to you. I'm gonna tape it down. Okay. All right, we have our sandals finished. There's Carlina's and there's Sammy's. You wanna try them on? See if they fit on your feet? Wow, nice. Good job, girls. Boaz was Ruth's redeemer. One of our key words from our Bible lesson has been the word redeemer. Although our focus is not on Ruth's redeemer, Boaz, but rather our redeemer, Jesus Christ, let's go ahead and look at both of them. Boaz was Ruth's redeemer because he was a close relative a family redeemer. In Galatians chapter four, verses four through five, it says, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Why is Jesus our redeemer? He's God's son. Ruth needed a redeemer because she could not redeem the property herself or carry on the family name. In Romans chapter six and verse 23, we read, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Why do we need a, need a redeemer? The payment of our sin is separation from God. We cannot save ourselves. When Boaz became Ruth's redeemer, he bought back the property, married Ruth, and started a new family. Now we're gonna read Ephesians chapter one and verse seven. In him, we have redemption through his blood 
the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. What happens as a result of Jesus being our Redeemer? Our sins can be forgiven because Jesus forgave all of us on the cross. Looking back over what we've learned these past three weeks, we see that the choices Ruth made from the very beginning led to, led to Boaz redeeming her. It was a commitment to follow her mother-in-law and trust God in an unknown place to her. In chapter 2, God rewarded Ruth's faithfulness by giving her favor with Boaz, and she was allowed to safely gather grain in his fields to provide for her and Naomi. But she still needed a redeemer to come forward to buy back the property, marry her, and have children to carry on the family name. Finally, in chapter 4, Boaz bought back the family property and married Ruth. The Bible lesson points us to our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Doing good things won't forgive us of our sins and give us a right relationship with God. Going to church and being from a Christian family can't save us. All of those are good things, but we cannot save ourselves. God is the one who puts us in a right relationship with God. In Jesus, we have all been redeemed. And it is only through what Jesus Christ did on the cross and in Jesus rising again. So there are two responses to this lesson. The first response is with gratitude. We respond with thankfulness that Jesus was the perfect Son of God and came to this earth to redeem us. In showing our thankfulness, we should want to live a life that honors God by our worship and obedience. The second response is to continue to seek Jesus every day in your life. It could look like prayer or spending time doing something that shows others that you love them. Your next step is to show your thankfulness for your Redeemer, through your worship and obedience to Him. Thank you so much for joining us today, boys and girls. We hope you had a good time. And now we're going to close with prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for giving your son for us to redeem us so that we can be with you in heaven. Please help us to respond today by giving thanks to you and by praying to you and by showing others how much we love you. Please be with us and help us to have a good week. Please protect the firefighters and everybody who is in, um, in danger this week. Please be with the um, first responders, the doctors, nurses, um, ambulance drivers, policemen and women, and firefighters um, as they respond to the COVID-19 crisis. And we ask that you would protect all of us and be with us this week. Help us to show you how much we love you and show others how much we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.